Greetings, Inspiree fam, and welcome to Love Inspiree YouTube. It's your girl, Angie, the founder of Love Inspiree LLC, where our mission is to build more powerful, transparent, and durable relationships. And we do that all through helping couples overcome their relationship adversity, as well as preparing individuals to enter healthy relationships. Welcome to the Breakover Series, Episode 4, Cohabitating Divorce. You will never guess what I found out. Stick around and let's talk love. secret to tell you guys come a little closer just a little more closer guess what i read a study in 2014 33% of couples who lived together before marriage were more likely to get a divorce than individuals that didn't live together i couldn't believe that when i read that you would think that couples who didn't live together and weren't privy to how this person moved if they left the toilet seat up if they had a sloppy kitchen did they wash their clothes and do all these things you would think that people that didn't know about that walking in would be more likely to get a divorce than those who have already figured out the pattern of the person that they're trying to be with. And as you guys know, I am totally against living together before marriage because I'm just old fashioned like that. I just truly believe that I'm not going to give no man husband benefits when he is just my boyfriend. You know, when you do stuff like that, it's you're giving more of yourself freely to a person that might not appreciate what you're doing or might not appreciate what you are giving. And then it becomes this thing where it turns into a business arrangement as opposed to a real relationship, a relationship that has goals and a relationship that has intention and a relationship that has purpose. The goal when you're dating and you're in this uh, period of learning each other is to work towards something, is to have a goal in mind of what you are trying to obtain. And I feel like if you're living together before you get married and you are not discussing certain things then you can get lost in that sauce of just being a living girlfriend or a living boyfriend with no goals headed in your direction and we're going to talk about some facts and then I'm going to talk about some ways that you can deal with that because I'm not going to judge people that live together I that's just my personal opinion but I am going to help you um get some you know make some steps towards the right way for those individuals who are living with their boyfriend or girlfriend and desire to get married. Disclaimer, this video is not for you if you are okay with being a live-in girlfriend or boyfriend. I'm specifically talking to the people that are living boyfriend and girlfriends that desire to get married in the future on how they can combat not getting lost in just living together and turning it into a business relationship as opposed to a real relationship that is, has purpose and intention. So let's talk some facts real quick. Well, I was kind of like you guys trying to figure out, well, why would people that live together already be more likely to get divorced than people who haven't lived together before marriage. My mind was just baffled with that information. And so I started doing more research on the topic because I'm unfamiliar with cohabitating before a marriage because I was 18. And obviously that was never gonna happen with, with my family. But I did some research and I found out that because Research shows that, you know, when you decide to move in with somebody, that's less conventional than most people waiting till they're married, then buying a house and living together and doing all that good stuff. So because that's less conventional and you have chose that route, that means more than likely you are not going to be conventional in working through your marriage vows and working through in sickness and in health. And you're more likely to leave and step out of the relationship as opposed to putting some effort into it. And I kind of understood it from that point because if you have a less conventional mindset, you're probably gonna be less conventional in other areas. And regardless of, um, dating or married, you're going to have some type of relationship adversity that's going to come up and you're going to need to work through that. And it doesn't matter if you are living together. It doesn't matter if you're not living together. You're going to have to learn how to get over those humps and bumps. And so I, like I said, I totally understood what was being said when I read that research. 
as I was reading further along, I also read that, you know, research shows that people tend to get married that are living together, tend to get married because they are forced to get married. So they have done all this work. They may have put their finances together. They may have bought a house. They may have started having children. And now they are forced to jump into a marriage for all the wrong reasons. And as you guys know, I'm totally against getting married for the wrong reasons. Um, I don't care if you have children together. I don't care about your finances being together. I don't care what you built. If you're not getting married to love and respect and have purpose in your relationship and to be with this one person for the rest of your life, you should not get married for any other reason but pure love and respect for the person that you want to go the distance with. And I feel like people that live together, they are kind of acting out the lifestyle of happily married or, or in this or in a marriage that um, that this does not exist. And not saying that you can't have a relationship without being married, but it's about living together and losing sight of the goal and what you are trying to work for. Again, disclaimer, this is for people that are living together and desire to get married. Again, if you are okay with being a live-in girlfriend or boyfriend, this video is not for you specifically for the people that desire to get married. And what I'm getting ready to go over now is some tips to help you combat that and keep your relationship headed in the right direction so you don't get lost in the sauce of, you know, just 10 years in the relationship and you have no ring and you are showing no um, intention and purpose in your relationship. So let's talk about some ways to help with that. Okay, here's the thing. If you choose to live together, that is totally fine. Every relationship is different from the next and I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm just here to give my opinion on what I think and just give the facts, some of the research that I have done on this specific topic of how cohabitating can lead to divorce in the future and just how to combat that because this series is about preventing divorce, what we can do better. So if you want to get live together before you get married, that's totally up to you. But I want to help you stay focused on the goal. So let's talk about some things, y'all. First things first, you need to set some relationship goals in your relationship. If you choose to live together and you have a desire to get married in the future, set those goals, okay? You need to be talking about having listen i don't care if you even gotta write down a dang on smart goal <laughs> for those who know what a smart goal is it's specific measurable attainable i forget the r and then time uh, essential okay let's talk about the goals what's the date when do we plan on getting married? How are we going to get there? Um, these are things that you need to be talking about so your partner knows that you're not just trying to be a live-in, uh, play wife or husband. You want something serious. You want a long-term commitment, something more um, tactful and something more in place than I can just get up and leave and walk out of the relationship as opposed to staying and fighting through those tough times. Because guess what? When you had those tough times in your relationship, that builds character in your relationship. It's some lessons that you learn. You just grow stronger from it. But you have to learn how to do it the right way and apply those lessons in what you're learning. But back to the goal setting talk about these things make sure these things stay relevant in your conversation i'm not saying attack the person every single day but make sure that you are talking about your goals your intentions for the relationship you know setting these goals and talking about these goals while you're dating and while you're living together this will prepare you for a healthy relationship because it will teach you how to work together as a team work together as a unit right this is all about preventing divorce how can we do uh, work smarter um, instead of harder in preventing divorce and having um, satisfying and healthy marriages okay you can do this 
Um, this will all prepare you for how to handle conflict, how to compromise, how to have weekly family meetings that end in purpose. You know, I'm using that word a lot this week because I see that so many of us are lacking purposeful relationships, relationships that have intention, relationship that has goals. You know, we need to get back to having unity in that teamwork in the relationship. So let's talk about some other things you can do too. It's also key to talk about the direction of the relationship. You guys know I said last week, there you can't get someplace that you haven't been without any direction. And your direction and the uh, end, end goal of your relationship, that comes between you two, the man and the woman. How are you guys gonna get there? What is the end game? What is the goal that you're trying, are you trying to obtain in your relationship? And these are things that you should be talking about in your relationship. Where do you see you guys in five years? Where do you see you guys in 10 years? And coming up with a step-by-step -step plan to get there. You know, you can't just talk about it and yap about it. You have to be willing to put a plan in place to get you from point A to point Z. Now, of course, there'll be hiccups and bumps and setbacks and roadblocks and obstacles and hurdles all along the way. But the point, the point is to have a plan, talk about the plan, talk about a roundabout just in case you, well, when you cross a hurdle to get from A to Z. And I think couples that live together, they tend to lose sight on the direction of their relationship. They choose, you know, so many years can go by so quick and we just lose all connection and in, in sight of the time and and, and, and we have t time is uh you know time <laughs> we have none of it and let's just say that and so you have to be intentional about what you are doing in the direction you are going in a, in a relationship and you know everybody's relationship goals are going to look different so i can tell you you know certain goals to have in your relationship but they're going to look different for each person so think about what you want as a couple and you have to sit down and talk about that it's not just about what angie wants i have to sit down when i'm talking about relationship goals and figure out what nate wants too uh, what does he what does he want from the relationship what direction that he is going we have goals for 2021 and 2022 and so we have a plan of attack to get from point a to point z you know those are our personal relationship goals and so you have to keep talking about these things because if you stop talking about them they become irrelevant and then uh, you know if you want marriage and the man doesn't want marriage or vice versa you know it could be put on the back burner and then you could just you know there's there's no purpose in living together if there's no direction if there's no end goal now of course if you just want to live together um because it's convenient for you again this video is not for you it's more specifically for people that desire marriage and i keep reiterating that because i know there are people that live with their boyfriend or girlfriend and they may feel a different type of way and of course you're entitled to feel that way but I am just giving my, you know, opinion on, you know, the things that I've read and the things that I'm trying to help you with, you know, to get you to where you desire to be in your relationship. Also, while you're living together, it's key to talk about your relationship boundaries. So this includes your relationship boundaries and your personal boundaries, your personal space, because we all can have our personal space even if we are married. You know, my husband has his me time where he's um, reading his Bible. He may be gaming. I have my me time where I'm either working or I'm reading or I'm doing something, you know, so it's okay to have your personal boundaries and then you have to have your relationship boundaries um, when you're living together. So um, what does finances look like? You know, what does, um, you know, talking to the opposite sex look like? What does your communication boundaries look like? These are all things to think about that if you decide to live together and if you're talking about these things and setting these boundaries, this will help you prevent divorce down the line, right? Because boundaries are significant for the simple fact that it lets people know where you stand, how you want to be respected, and what you desire from the relationship. Everybody needs boundaries, whether you are just getting together, whether you've been married 20 years, you need boundaries because you need to let this person know how you want to be respected and loved in the relationship. Another thing you need to be discussing in your relationship while you're living together and desiring to get married is creating safety and security in your relationship. And I talk extensively about this in the Connection Beyond Sex online workshop about the P tree odd. It's three P's and that's producing, providing, and protecting. And that's not just for the man. 
But if you want to know more about that, you can pick up the online workshop for $39. Link is below. And the reason why it's so significant to create safety and security in your relationship is, is because it sets the precedent for the duration of your relationship, the duration of your marriage, how you're going to um, love and protect one another and uh, create an environment where people can be vulnerable with you. And that starts in the beginning of your relationship in the foundation. And so if you are living together and you are not nurturing the relationship, you need to start nurturing that relationship because that's how you will, um, let's say you are forced to get married and you divorce because you weren't nurturing. Um, if you're going to live together, you have to nurture. This is the time to live together and continue to nurture your relationship. Treat it as if you guys were first dating to help prevent divorce in the future um you know because they say people are forced to get married if they live together because they have created this life together okay that's fine but create um, nourishment in your relationship create a relationship that is um, worth telling the grandkids about one day you can create all that we build connections with one another and if we can get to the point where we start building connections um, again in relationships relationships can be long-lasting relationships can be healthy relationships can be worth having they cannot be treated you know how people call like to call them today a business arrangement my marriage is not a business arrangement Okay, I don't care what anybody says. I have a healthy relationship and that's because I built it and that's what I'm teaching people to do and how to do it. Building and creating that connection with one another. So continue to maintain your um, nourishment. Continue to um, have fun in your relationship. Continue to show honesty when you're living together. You know, treat the relationship significant so when you do get married, It'll be an ease, baby. It'll be a breeze, you know? It'll be smooth, maybe not smooth sailing, but you'll have a grasp of how to handle things as opposed to just sitting there and letting your relationship do what it does and then getting married and trying to figure it out along the way. Listen, you have the advantage here. Take advantage of the time that you are living together and put in that work so you can be a dominant and powerful couple when you do decide to head down that aisle and get married. I just want to add on there, it's also significant to talk about your marriage goals. What are you desiring for marriage? What is the outcome that you want? You know, nobody will know what you want if you don't tell them what you want. So if you're desiring a marriage where it's just you and this person and, um, you know, you want uh, respect and you want loyalty and you want to have good communication, express that. Now is the time to get it all out. Listen, I always tell my clients, if you get how you get the real you out in the beginning, because guess what happens? You weed out those other people that are not going to respect you and that don't want to um, understand or respect your boundaries, okay? Be yourself in the beginning so you can attract the right audience and end up with the right person. It's all about being your authentic self. If you pre present yourself as fake, you will attract people that's fake. So the money question of the day is, do you think cohabitating really causes divorce? Do you think people that cohabitate lose sight of the direction of the relationship? You know, my personal opinion is if you're not doing the right things, I absolutely do believe that you can lose sight of having an intentional and purposeful relationship. If you're not doing the work while you're living together, you're never going to get there. And that's even when you get married too. You can't just do the work and decide to get married and then stop doing the work and expecting this powerful and blossoming relationship. No, you have to put in the effort and do the work that's the only way that it's going to work is if both of you are on one accord and trying to make the relationship prosper and elevate in a place that is of God and that is um, helpful for the both of you. So leave your comments below. I'm curious to know what you think about this topic. You know, like I said, I'm not here to judge those who live together, or who live with their significant other. That is not my intention at all. This video, again, was just specifically for people that live together and do desire to get married in the future. And, you know, some people that have lost sight, you know, they've been in a relationship for 10, 15 years and it's just not going anywhere. So there's always things that we can be doing and um, learning to elevate ourselves and to, you know, process 
prosper and be successful in life. So again, please drop your comments below. I'm curious to know what you're thinking. Just make sure that they are respectful and um, I'll see you guys all in the comments. Thank you all for the watching the Breakover series. I will see you all next week with episode five. And I will see you all, of course, this Wednesday on our regularly scheduled YouTube program. Have a blessed day.